advantage of uh, your abilities. So you got to make sure that you are cleared. Just, Lord, I forgive every, anyone that has treated me wrong. I forgive them in Jesus' name. Amen. And you will feel that in the lower part of your back. It's going to begin to go right now. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Move. Move. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Apostle Fred, for uh, flowing and uh, keeping the ministry, the, the, the online version of the conference alive. We bless the Lord for the intercessors who have also prayed. And uh, we now streaming live because we'll be waiting for our brethren in Nigeria. And they said we shall go ahead and we should go ahead and start streaming uh, so that brethren from other parts of the world can connect. And uh, please, uh, you can check. If you need to accept the streaming, accept it, and then please share the, the live stream on your Facebook page. You can also connect other people, and we're going to uh, continue in a moment to uh, flow. Um, um, our national leaders who are here, if you have a word of prayer, whatever you Lord lays on your heart, you can just go ahead and, you know, you can go ahead and release it. And Apostle Fred, if the Lord uh, gives you a word for somebody who has not been prayed for, it can proceed. Okay, so we are we are now live on Facebook, so please uh, you can share the, the, the video on your own page. If you belong to any group, you can also share it on the group you belong to, and in that way we'll be able to reach out to more people, okay? Thank you. Prophetess Louise. The Lord is saying, don't you dare give up on that desire or dream. Things look really messed up. But that's just a test of your faith. Next week, it's going to spin around completely. And all that you've been looking at that is so negative and so disheartening will be gone. You and that person will be able to step forward. Watch and see. Watch and see, saith the Lord. Benoy of the India. May I pray with you, brother? Yes, sir. Yes. The Lord is saying, I told you, get that voice ready. Get that voice ready. You may not sound like an opera star, but the thing that makes the voice uh, what effective is the anointing that's on it. Your voice is anointed. God has anointed your voice for you to bless his people. Stop looking at yourself as, well, I'm not all that good. It's not even about good. It's about being obedient to God. When we're obedient to God, he blesses. And a lot of times he's having us do things that are way beyond our natural personalities or abilities so he can show himself strong. He's saying, I'm moving on the family situation also. Get your head out the way and replace it with scripture. With scripture. They're ready and they're waiting. They're ready and they're waiting. Get your head out of it because when your head's in it, you blame yourself for things that it's not even your fault. And you are constantly beating yourself down. I'm not a God to beat you down. I'm a God to lift you up. 
and to begin to show you the things I've put in you to be a blessing to you and to those around you. Be blessed, my son. I am your father. I am your father. I am your father, saith the Lord thy God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Matthew, may I pray with you, sir? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Please do it, sir. The Lord is saying, you're not tired. <laughs> you're not tired. <laughs> you're, yeah, tired yeah. Of, you're tired of people, <laughs> yeah. but you're not tired. See the difference. You are around a lot of unfulfilled desires and dreams and you are blaming yourself the Lord is saying you must understand these things are happening because it wasn't the season the season is on you Amen. one more time you said I'll try it one more time if that don't work then I'm not going to do it he's saying that one more time we'll do it that one more time will do it. Father, touch his chest, his heart, right now in Jesus' name. We release health. We release strength. Let the blood flow the way it's supposed to flow so that the energy is there, Lord. And he has a healthy heart, Lord. We thank you and praise you, mighty God. Raise him up. Cause him to feel his limbs, Lord, coming alive, Lord Jesus, and his mind being clear. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Kar Kartika? Yes, Can I pray sir. with you, sir? Please, sir, please. The Lord is saying, you need to remove the word failure from your vocabulary. The devil has plagued you with that ever since you were a little boy. No matter what you do, it's not good enough. No matter what you do, it won't come out right. You might as well stop. You might as well kill yourself. You might as well. All these negative things that are coming to you, that's the devil programming you to feel like nothing so you can't do what God has placed you on this earth to do. Right now, Father, I come against every lie that the enemy has released and programmed my brother with. Lord, you are a God of truth. We release truth right now. Begin to invade him, Lord. Begin to invade his mind. Begin to invade his spirit, Lord. Transfer it. Transfer it. Let him feel your move right now, right now, right now, right now. That's it. You can feel it in your heart right now. Stir it up. Stir his heart up right now. Stir his heart up right now, Lord, so that he knows that this is real, so that he knows you are in the midst of taking away the years of negativity. The Lord is saying, I have blessed you. I've given you gifts. I've showed you at times when you have stepped out, you've seen the progress, but then the enemy would frighten you and scare you and you step back in. No more. Don't go in no more. Don't go in no more. We put a shield of protection over him right now so that only positive things will be able to come on him and in him. And Lord, show him how to use your word so that it is alive inside of him. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You will go forward in me from this day on, saith the Lord thy God. Amen. 
Um, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Who's in? Bishop Buta Golshem. Did I pronounce your name right? Yes, sir. You pronounce very well. Thank you. I was close. <laughs> the Lord is saying, you are a bishop. And at times you're questioning yourself. I put titles on men. And men put titles on men. When I put a title on a man, is because that is so. He's saying the title is put on. Receive all. I guess they're ready to start. Okay. Receive honor, honor. Receive all the glory. Receive honor, Jehovah. You are the Most High. Jehovah, you are the Most High God. Jehovah. You are the most high, Jehovah. You are the most high, God. Jehovah. You are the most high, Jehovah. You are the most high, God. Jehovah. You are the most high, Jehovah. You are. The most high God, Jehovah, you are the most high, Jehovah, you are the most high God, Jehovah, you are the most high, Jehovah, you are the most high God. We lift your name, Lord, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name higher, Lord, we lift your name. Yes, we lift your name. We lift your name higher. We lift your name. Jehovah, we lift your name. Omega, we lift your name. We lift your name higher. We lift your name. You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, oh, you are the mighty God, you are the great I am, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, eh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah,
Alleluia. Alleluia. Lift your voice and say, Oh, Alleluia. 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 People of God, can you just open your mouth and give God thanks for today? Thank Him for this program. Bless Him for bringing you. He is God, and there is none like unto Him. The rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys, the bright and the morning star. Creator of the heavens and the earth. Bakala Basuke Teleba. We thank you. Honor him, he is God. Pray for those who are still on their way. There are many delegates, close to 50 of them, coming from Lagos on their way, coming from all over the country. Pray for those people joining messes. Pray for those who are coming from around Owere, Imo State. Ask God to bring them. Grant his people joining messes. The hand of the Lord will gather them. The Lord will protect them. They will not meet evil on the way. Evil will not meet them on the way. Lift up your voice and begin to take authority over every power of the enemy. Every power that is not of God. Break the hold of the enemy over this meeting. Every satanic gathering, every power in the land, in the air, in the sea, every demonic influence, every manipulation of darkness, every gang up of hell, we bring an end to it. We reject them, we refuse them, we uproot them, we pull down the strongholds of the enemy, we resist the operations of darkness. In this place, we pull down every imagination. We bring it to the obedience of Christ. We cast them down. We reject them. We refuse them. In the name of Jesus, we cast out every power that exalts itself over the name of Jesus Christ. All the spirits that are on assignment, we resist them, we renounce them, we refuse their operation in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take charge over them, we neutralize them, we nullify whatever the enemy has planned to do, every power that will keep people from coming, every power that will bring distraction, confusion. Every power that will bring manipulation, we resist such powers. We refuse their operation. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to plead the blood of Jesus. We overthrow them by the blood of Jesus. We overthrow them by the blood of Jesus Christ. By that precious blood, no hand of the enemy shall operate here. We redeem this program with the blood. We cover this program. We cover all the speakers. We cover everyone with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Makatole Brahande. Li katole begedele brahande. Je katole mahande li basuke teleba. Re karabo sekele brahande. Makotole bregedele brahande. E katole brasunda le makatala brahande. Je gedele bregedele makatala brahande. Rico to lebre gedele bakatara bahande. Makuri baseke te li bakatara bahande. 
Declare this meeting open with a word of prayer. Dr. Kossa, let's welcome him as he comes. Praise the Lord. 21 years ago, Apostle Vance and his team visited over it. And their ministry among us gave back to what is known today as IMF. We have gathered in this meeting to celebrate our 20 past years of existence. <laughs> and only God could have done that. Today, IMF is found in several countries of the world. We thank God for the opportunity to come together to celebrate this great outing of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, I invite all of us to join our hearts together. A good time here, a good time of fellowship, a good time of uh, meeting new friends and making new friends, a good time of uh, uh, having new connections that will enhance our effectiveness in ministry and life. May God help us to have a good time. In Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit is going to direct all the activities we are going to undertake. All the coordinators, all the worship leaders, all the speakers, everything that's going to happen here today and tomorrow will be under the superintendence of the Holy Spirit. And so Holy Spirit, come and take control and guide and lead and order our steps according to your desires and according to your likening in Jesus' name. Amen. Having said so and having prayed to us, I declare this conference open. Hallelujah. We are moving very fast. So we just take a, a worship, a little praise. We invite uh, Evangelist Mrs. Alani to come and lead us for about five minutes. Then we go into the opening speech. Somebody shout hallelujah to the king of kings and the lord of lords, the I am that I am, the ancient of days, the Eshadai, the Adonai, the Yeshua. Somebody shout hallelujah that you are here today, I'm here today, it's by the grace of God. Let us celebrate Jesus. Amen. Adonai, we worship Son of God, you are so good, almighty God, our Lord be your name, your dominion is
Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Just a word. My name is Pastor Iken Nagua, the chairman of the planning committee by the special grace of God. I want to welcome everyone that is here presently. Thank you for coming. Uh, God will visit you in this program. I want to appreciate God for myself and the committee members. And I want to thank our fathers that found us worthy and asked us to package this program. This is a unique program in that we are celebrating or marking 21 years of the anniversary of IMF. You will agree with me that a child that is 21 years is no more at 
preach, they will pray, we'll continue with it here. It's an international conference. I want to welcome you and ask you to relax in the presence of the Lord. You will not regret coming. Uh, God will surely visit you in Jesus' name. I also want to ask you to, you know, put decorum on the front burner because this program is being watched on Facebook and it's on stream. So package yourself. The world is watching you and the world is participating in what we are doing. Having said that, I want to welcome you once again. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve. God bless you in Jesus' name. A little clap would have been okay. Thank you. Join me now to welcome the Nigerian president of IMF to give his opening speech in the person of Pastor Emmanuel Christopher. Clap for him as he comes, please. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. You are all welcome to Owere, Imo State, Nigeria. I thank God for making it possible for all of us to be here today. And everyone all over the world that is connected with this wonderful conference. I welcome the chairman of the governing council of IMWF and the wife, Dr. Cosmos and Dr. Adeola Ilechupu. Can we clap for them? They're here sitting. We're also privileged to have in our meeting the trustee member representing Africa in the person of Bishop Stafford Mwogu is here. And his wife, Pastor Tina Mwogu, is on the way coming. I personally invite everyone that is connected to this conference today all over the world. I welcome the presence of Apostle George Akalono and Pastor Grace Akalono the international president of IMWF. I welcome the presence of the founder of this wonderful network in the person of Bishop Vance and Debbie Russell, the United States of America. Can we put our hands together. I also welcome the person in charge representing this network in North America and the wonderful wife. I welcome the person that is also representing Europe at the trustee of IMF and the wife. I welcome everyone all over the world that is connected to IMF the members of the Global Governing Council, all the members of the Global Executive Committee, all the members of the Nigerian Advisory Committee, they all will be here today. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? I also welcome the Nigerian Executive. I welcome the state coordinators in the sixth geopolitical zone. I welcome especially our guests that came from Lagos, um, Evangelist Helen, who have attended most of the global programs. She's here City. Can we clap for her? I welcome specifically one of our champion coordinators, Apostle Olaini and the wife. They are here. Can we clap for them also? And every other person that has made this meeting today. All of you are very important. The people that are watching all over the world, all our members in the six continents of the world, they are all watching now. And everyone, you are welcome to Nigeria. You're welcome to Imo State. You're welcome to the city of Owere, where this 
Network started 21 years ago. Thank you for that hand. I thank God for what he has done. I have been a servant and a laborer in IMWF for the past 21 years. I started as the executive assistant to the national director, Apostle George Akalono, in 2001. I worked and served under him when he was the national director. And I worked and served under every other one that has been on that position. Dr. Cosmos Idechuku, um, and Bishop Stafford Mwogu, um, Bishop uh, Godi Okafo, Pastor Jela Tonebu, Bishop Ezenebo, and I happen to be the seventh person occupying that seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. So within these 21 years, it has been easy for us here because we always have a corporate fellowship every other second Monday of the month. It has gone round. We have been able to work together and sustain the fellowship. And today, this particular work that started as a small thing here in Oere has spread its tentacle all over the world. So you are welcome to IMF. Today, tomorrow, as we sit together in the presence of the Lord, we are going to receive from our best all over the world. We are going to receive impartation. We are going to receive teachings. We are going to receive exaltation. We are going to receive prophecy. And the Lord God who has chosen us to be together will refresh us and impart us all specially. So once again, I want to appreciate all of us all over the world that is watching and everyone that is connecting and our elders and leaders that are here and every one of you that will be a part of this you are all welcome to the city of Owere where IMF started 21 years ago and I believe you me that between this time and the next level we are going to attain from today it is going to be awesome in the presence of God thank you very much you are welcome Hallelujah. Amen. Please, let's try as much as possible to, you know, relax and enjoy ourselves in this fellowship. Hallelujah. Um, because we have our fathers in the house, and we trust the Lord to speak to us through every vessel that will be present here, whether from online or off-site. And we we'll trust the Lord to help us in Jesus' name. At this point, I have one assignment to do is to welcome the African... Um, president of IMF and is the person of uh, Bishop Stafford Mwogo. Let's put our hands together to celebrate him as he comes to speak to us. Appreciate him. Please appreciate him. He's a father. He's a father. He's a father. Keep celebrating. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? It is a happy, happy anniversary. 21 years of existence of this mustard seed that was sown here in a way by. Apostle Vance and the wife Debbie Russe. And we want to appreciate them and we want to appreciate Pastor George Akalono who helped to also nurture it to this stage. And then our global governing council chairman, Pastor Cosmos Ilechuku, 
and all the national presidents and all the coordinators and every one of us who are members who contributed to keep the flag flying and supported for it to spread from a weary city to Nigeria a nation, to Africa a continent, and to all over the world. I want you to give yourself a clapping ovation. <laughs> Hallelujah! Today I have just a little assignment, and that assignment is to look at what we call Walking in set time. Walking in set time. And I looked at the scriptures. I couldn't see where I could lay hand on. But suddenly I saw one. In the book of First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Chapter 12. First Chronicle chapter 12, verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their command the sons of Issachar one is that they have understanding of the times and when we look at we say plural language they are times not that they have the understanding of the time which means we have different kinds of time and I want to talk about two of them time and then set time when we talk about time, we are talking about that thing that is measurable in terms of seconds, hours, days, months, years. That's what we are talking about when we talk about time. It is a measurable period during which an action or process or condition exists. It is a point or period when something occurs. Time. Spiritually, time, I see time as having a free setting of things which means you can stop it you can stop that activity you can stop that visitation you can stop it at the same time you can slow it down you can delay it and at the same time you can fast forward it because it has a free setting. It's different from set time. This is time we are talking about. This is time. And when we look at the scripture and see those who operated within time, somebody like Hannah, Hannah operated under time. And she tried to, f she tried all she could to make certain occurrence to happen. She fought with her co-wife. She fought with the children. She fought with the husband. 
And at the time, what happened? The Bible said the husband got annoyed with her and said, Anna, what's wrong with you? Do I not want more than 10 sons to you? What's your problem? He held the husband, give me a child or, or I die. And the husband said, am I God? Do I know what more than 10 sons to you, Hannah? So you can bring about realization of time to action to happen by different attitude. And what was her attitude? Her attitude was that she, for the first time in her life, she meditated on what the husband said. Do I know what more than 10 songs for the first time in the life of Hannah? Hannah slowed down. Hannah said it's true. These children I'm talking about, children, children, what has it to do with marriage? My marrying my husband. My marrying my husband is the first thing. And not children. And what happened? Her attitude towards children changed. And Hannah went into the temple and said, God, if only you would give me a child. When you give it to me, I will give it back to you. This is a woman that wants children by all means. I cannot give me child or I die. She said, no, take back the child. God, take it. My problem is not children. I have found solution to my life. It's not children. And she realized. And not only that, she said, God, when I give that child to you, she will never come back. He, sorry, he will never come back home. I declare him a Nazarite. He will never come home again. He's a woman that needed child by all means. So time. Another person we can look at. Well, this is this is one actually making use of time. Then the next person is Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary fast forwarded time. Remember what I told you? Time has a free setting. You can slow, you can stop, you can fast forward. And Mary came to Jesus. There is no more wine. The wine in the wedding has finished. And Jesus thought, what have I with you, woman? My time has not come. Mary fast-forwarded. Miracle. When it was not. When it was not yet to happen. Say, my time has not come. But he did it by faith. Why Hannah did her own by meditation? Mary did her own by faith. How did he do it? Immediately she said that to Jesus. And Jesus was talking. She didn't even mind what Jesus was talking. She went out and made the disciple. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And walked away. And that was all about it. Now let me come to set time. In set time, you can't slow it. You can't stop it. You can't change it. You can't fast forward it. It is set. And set time does not always come because you have faith. No, it is what has been said. No one can change it. Even your faith cannot change it. Set time. Set time. You, the only way, listen to me, you know something happened to 
Abraham in set time. Abraham had no set time. Abraham operated on time. And the, the promise given to him, there was no set time. Abraham provoked. You can provoke set time where you will not have a set time. You don't have a set time. You're operating on that time. You, go, you cannot provoke set time. What, how did Abraham do that? Abraham, having children, lingered and lingered and lingered. <laughs> Even the last discussion with God is tell God, just forget these children. Let me have Ishmael. Ishmael is okay. God said, never. A, the son of a bond woman shall not inherit the land. Watch it. God wants to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He walked to, he was passing and Abraham was outside. Abraham saw three men whom he does not know. He ran to them. Says, please, can you permit me to bring water and wash your feet? And they said, okay. They said, all right. Okay, can you also, can I add some food lunch for you they said okay he went in and cooked to Sarah or oh, that Sarah Sarah go quick please make this food and bring in this our age you order your wife to go back to the kitchen and make food emergency for somebody who didn't For somebody who told you, who didn't tell you he's visiting. It's a very difficult thing. Sarah went in automatically, walked without argument, saying, did you have an appointment with them? Did they inform us they are coming? He, she didn't say that. She ran straight and prepared the food and brought her. time is the woman who saw Elisha and his servant visiting and after visiting they will go and the woman went to the husband please can you permit me to build something a penthouse on top of our roof and put a table and a bed and a chair so that when the man of God visits So when the man of God visits, he will go there and do what? He will go there.
The Bible said they have understanding of what Israel should do. And Jesus told us many things that will happen during the end times. To what extent have we keep to those things? We are drawing clothes that Jesus saw it in the spirit. He saw that we are drawing the days of Lord who are drawing closer to that waters for himself and he said he will reveal to his to those who feel for him those who feel for him we have lost the appetite for God and his word no more appetite we don't feel again. We are not hungry of the world. We are not hungry of God himself. That's what carried David all along. As the deer panted for water, so my soul longed after thee. Psalm 63. Though when I lie down on my bed in the night watches, I meditate upon thee. What are we talking about? We have lost all those sensitivity, those appetites. When we lose appetite for food, we go immediately and buy some motivator. Now you have lost appetite in the word of God. What have you done so far? Did you go in to, to pray? Did you go in to fast and pray? That's the question. These people have understanding of the time and they know what Israel has to do the next thing and the Bible said they have that capacity to lead by influencing the people to follow them and to do what they are doing the problem we have with walking in time is that a good number of us what we preach is not what we are doing Who, what will the person follow he's supposed to follow what you are doing Paul said follow me as I follow Jesus he said he's king's man he's king's man Follow the leaders. They follow the leaders. Do we have that capacity to influence those who are following us? Do we have that life? Evangelism has changed. People have got bored of crusade, got bored of uh, uh, house to house or whatever. What a day after now is the new thing. There should be an update. And what is that update? Live the life. You are the written epistle. 
our written epistle for the world to read. The Bible told the woman in first Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Your husband does not believe God, doesn't care about God, but you can still win her, win him. What do you do? By your conversation, by your attitude, by your humility, you will win your husband without mentioning the Bible. Because he will say, whosoever gave you these attributes is worthy to be worshipped. So what am I doing? They have understanding of what this particular morning, I want to let us understand. When we know, have understanding of the time, know what coming of our Lord Jesus Christ do we have the understanding of the times do we know what we ought to do do we know that every day we're supposed to update our Christian life do we know that every day we're supposed to know our spiritual status that status does not end with HIV know your HIV status this time know your spiritual world status that's what Paul said examine yourself and see whether you are still in the faith. A time has come, we will organize ourselves. A time has come when what Jesus has said, we will take it seriously. A time has come when we will measure ourselves by the word that was spoken concerning us. Do I... Are you intoxicated because of God? So that you're, you will rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. When you are not intoxicated, you can't rejoice again. I say what? Rejoice. You're supposed to be joy, an addict of joy. That's what it means. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Somebody fabricate things against you instead of you to cry. What do you do? The Jesus said, be exceedingly glad. Do you, are you the same thing with every other person? Are you on the same level with unbelievers? Those who walk within set time, they do a lot of examination. 
a lot of evaluation to know where they are. A lot of evaluation. A lot of examination. And when you discover any shortcoming, you face it just as you face sickness. When you discover sickness in your physical body, you go to the best physician to deal with that matter. Why should your spiritual dimension be neglected? Have we become the people of the world who care for the remain instead of the man? They care for the remain. That's the people of the world. They care for this, this remain body that will remain. But the main man inside, which is the demand, no care. When you look with spiritual binoculars, you see that a lot of handsome, beautiful ladies and handsome men, well clothed, are suffering from spiritual anemia. Spiritual washoko, for those who know what is washoko during the war. And yet, no cure. We continue managing things. We continue petting things. He who walk in the set time does not do that. He gets himself prepared. He believes what God has said. He doesn't argue with Zoom, argue with what God has said. So this morning, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming very soon. Those who are waiting for him, expecting him, hungry, believing has come, he will surely come. He will appear. He will appear to don't wait until when Jesus will come in power and glory when all eyes shall see him. Don't wait for that time. Be among those who are very ready for him. And by their readiness, they will be raptured. Will be raptured. How many of you want to be raptured here? Can you wave that hand? Say after me, Lord Jesus, I will surely be raptured. I will not miss heaven. I will miss hell. In the name of Jesus. I want to encourage every one of us. God is merciful. But don't take his mercy for granted. God is merciful. Don't take his mercy for granted. Don't take because you are under grace and you abuse grace. If this sin has a consequence, but God will not punish you. He's a God of love in the new covenant. Is not to be associated with anything evil. He will never punish you, can't kill you, he can't torture you, he can't punish you when you abuse grace and sin and live in disobedience. What happens? Three people that will punish you. You will punish yourself first. The authority, the community, the society, the government will punish you. And the devil will punish you. Not God. He's unmovable, very constant. He's love, very constant. So don't take grace for granted. Let us pray. Let us pray. Come rise up. Let us pray. Mm. 
The King is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye shall see the King. The King is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye. Every eye shall see the king. The tomb is empty. He died for me and rose again. Every eye, every eye shall see the king. Father, we thank you. To you, the king eternal, the invisible, the only wise God, Majesty in Jesus' name. Wow, well, celebrate Jesus one more time. Did you hear that? When God has set a time for you, nobody can change it. Take note of that. Number two, you can provoke the set time. So I want you, as you are listening, be thinking of how you're going to provoke your set time. And I want you to bear this in mind. This conference is your set time. Don't allow it to pass you by. Key into it that by the time you're living here, God has settled you. In Jesus' name. We thank you, sir, for that wonderful word. The Lord will surely visit us in Jesus' name. Right now, we want to invite our daddy, the chairman of the governing council of IMF, to come and address us and speak to us and impact life onto us. It is the set time to welcome Dr. Cosmas Ilechuku. Welcome, sir. Hallelujah. That was an awesome word from the bishop. Can we put our hand together for him one more time? Well, of course, we didn't expect anything better. Is he not a bishop? So, <laughs> if uh, he shouldn't allow himself to not to deliver at any time. Praise the Lord. We are grateful to God for the opportunity of this conference. Uh, IMF has a unique anointing. An anointing that we plan tight program with so many speakers with short, short times. By the end of the day, you are so full, you think you have had everything. That's the way we operate. Small, small time, many people talking. And at the end of the day, we go home fully, fully, fully loaded. It's a unique grace IMF carries all over. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and bless you for this opportunity to share your word with your children. Let it be that the ministry of your word will bring encouragement to all of us. To your honor and glory, we have prayed in Jesus' name. Well, the theme for our conference, this anniversary conference, is walking in the set time. And uh, we got it from the Bible, Psalm 102, verse 13. I will invite you to open to Psalm 102. Verse 13. Let me read Psalm 102 from verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And let my cry come to you. 
Do not hide your face from me. In the day of my trouble, incline your ear to me in the day that I call, answer me, especially. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned like hurt. My heart is striking and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread because of the sound of my groanings. My bones cling to my skin. I am like a pecan of the wilderness. I am like an awl of the desert. I lie awake and I'm like a sparrow alone on the house top. My enemies reproach me all day long. Those who deride me swear an oath against me, for I have eaten ashes like bread. I mingled my drink with weeping because of your indignation and your wrath. For you have lifted me up and cast me away. My days are like a shadow and lightning. And I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever. And the remembrance of your name to all generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the set for the time to favor her has come. For the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Now you will see that the text of our theme is couched in a situation that is troublesome. Somebody, the psalmist, was recalling negative experiences of pain, of suffering, of neglect, of rejection. He was in a situation that he didn't like. And so he was looking forward to divine intervention. And suddenly, he came upon a realization that God has set a time for his liberation. That God has set a time for his deliverance. And so he exultantly announced to all and sundry that, let me read it again, that God will arise, you will arise, and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. You see, it is not what you are going through in life that is important. What is important is who you become because of what you went through in life. So many times we allow our problem to consume us. And our problem defines our identity. Our problem defines our attitude. We become incarnation of our problem. We live our problem. We behave our problem. We demonstrate our problem. Our problem and difficulties becomes the way we define the way we relate to one another. It ought not to be so. It doesn't matter what we are going through. It is an event. It's a phase in life. It's something that is here that may not be there tomorrow. That's what the psalmist is telling us. Yes, I have suffered. Yes, I am rejected. Yes, I'm lonely. Look at the beauty. Look at the, 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 the metaphors he used to describe his experience. Look at what he says. Verse 3. For my days are consumed like smoke. 
My bones are born like a herd. My heart is streaking and withered like grass. I forgot to eat my bread because of the sounds of my groaning. My bones cling to my skin. Can you imagine? He has lost so much weight that he is now like, now, now walk, like a walking skeleton. That's a picture here, you know. And he went ahead to say, I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an all of the desert. I lie awake. I am like a sparrow alone on a house top. You know, when things go sour for you, when things go difficult for you, you discover that you are alone in this world. You discover how lonely you can be. That was where the psalmist was. And psalmist began to consider in his heart, what is going to be my ultimate end? And suddenly, he came upon this realization. You will arise. A time is coming when you will change the whole of these things. You are going to rewrite my history. You are going to turn this suffering all around. You will arise. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her, yet yeah, the said time has come. You, won't, you may be crying today. But you're not like you, you're not going to cry forever. Difficulty may abound today. You may be finding it difficult to even find food to eat. But there is a God that loves you. He won't keep you hungry forever. Today you are struggling in ministry. You gather one person, three, two, we go away. And every year, every time, it looks as if you are starting all over again. But something in you continues to say, ride on board. You will make it. But the evidence before you is so frustrating, so defeating, so discouraging, that if you are allowed to do what you want to do, you will throw in the towel and back away. But something inside of you says, stand there. There is deliverance coming. That is exactly what God is telling us with this thing. There is a set time for your lifting. And like Bishop told us, when that time comes, nothing can stop it. You will be like them that dream, because God will fill your mouth with laughter, and your tongues with songs. There is a set time for everything. That's what the Bible tells us. Time to suffer and time to everybody you see in ministry that seem to be doing well today, how they rough in life. Let them sit down and tell you, see, the problem we have, you know, when you want to judge a man, you usually judge him at the apex of his life. You don't judge him at the beginning. You don't judge him when he was tricking. You don't judge him when he was at a own level or, you know, having similar experience for, like you. You judge him at that point. Oh, no. Today, somebody like Ademoy is flying on a jet. But I knew him when he, did it, when he, had, a, when he had a 504. I knew him when he had a it's, the car he has was 504, like every other person. I knew him when he had a tiny PG, a Mercedes 190. I knew him then. He didn't start where he is today. You see him at the height of glory, but that wasn't how he started. You don't compare yourself at that point. Stay at your level. Keep your eyes on God. A set time for your lifting is coming. And nothing can change it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, set time in this context can also mean a time that God has impressed in your heart. Anyhow, he gives you that understanding. And you define your own agenda. That was exactly what Nehemiah did. He heard from Hanani that things were bad in Israel. The tombs of their fathers were exposed because the wall were broken down. He broke down in tears, fasted and prayed. Went to see the king. King saw him with solemn face. What's wrong, sir? I have never seen you this way. He said, why would I not be sad? Why wouldn't my face be solemn when the graves of my fathers were exposed and the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and compassion arrested the mind of the king? And the king said, what can I do for you? He said, send me back to Jerusalem 
to go and rebuild the wall about it. And the Bible tells us the king gave him the permission. And he set time for himself. He gave the king, I am going to get this job done at so, 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 so time. There is a time God can set for you. There is also a time you set for God. You say, God, my prayer life has to change. My time of fellowship with you that is spasmodic this time. It depends on circumstances. No, I have to make a change. Henceforth, I'm going to give you a definite time. I will be meeting with you in, 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 in my house very early in the morning or very late at night, depending on your program. You set that time for God. You tell God, yeah, this may not have been doing well because I have not given full attention all of these distractions i am setting the time for you that by so 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 time i will weed myself of all these distractions and focus on the assignment you have given to me that is another way you define a time of your lifting nobody ever give god attention that doesn't receive an attention from god nobody anytime you decide to give god attention god Turn around and gives you attention. The problem we have a lot of times is that we allow ourselves to be so busy that we don't have time to give God attention. But the truth is this. God will never force his way to get your attention. You must come to a point in your life and ministry where you know you cannot go it alone any longer. You cannot continue to do the repeating the same mistake year in, year out. You cannot continue to give the same excuses year in, year out. You say to yourself, enough is enough. From today onwards, the trajectory of my life and ministry must change for the better. You set that time and you break loose of all the limitations and limiting circumstances. You will see how God will stretch out his hand there and give you a helping out of that situation. You must set a time, such a time for yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. You must set such a time for yourself. I don't know anybody that God is blessing that I admire who didn't have a time in his life when he said enough is enough. I have joked, have played enough. Henceforth, I'm going to be serious. Henceforth, I'm going to, be, I'm going to focus. Henceforth, I'm going to give God my time. And God will always turn around and give the person his time. Now, if you look at the book of Acts of the Apostle, Jesus has just risen from the dead 40 days after. It was time for him to go back to heaven. And the apostles came to him and said, oh, God, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus said, listen to me. That one does not concern you. What concerns you is to prepare to receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So I can go forth and be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and all Judea and Samaria and utter the uttermost part of the, the, the end. But as for the times and seasons God has set for himself, Leave that for God. There are times and seasons God has set for himself. And for that one, whether you pray or whether you don't pray, it doesn't affect it. It's completely outside of your control. It's right there in the hand of God. That was the aspect from the angle from which the bishop came. If you receive a revelation of such time, nothing changes it. Nothing changes it. The devil has no influence over it. If you have no influence over it, it is a time God has said. And as soon as that time, you can't hasten it, you can't delay it. It is a permanent fixation by God. And once that time comes, God will put everything into motion and things will begin to cascade their way towards you. And success will begin to be resulted. So that's a set time that God may, 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 may be coming. And I am believing that there is such a set time we respect to the end time revival that God has given to us. There is a revival that is coming our way. And you know what? You can't stop it. 
Nobody can stop it. It is, it is in God's program. It is what God has said. Many people all over the world speaks about this revival that is coming. They don't have an idea. Some of them don't have an idea of what they are saying. They just say what the Holy Ghost put in their mouth. But those of us who live around here understand more in, in deeper details what is meant by that. Because God has chosen that this environment will host that coming revival. And we know it's going to happen. That revival is not coming because of any man. That revival is coming because it is according to God's set time. It is a season and time that God has set for himself. Such things are like the natural seasons we have. You can't change the time that is time for Hamatan or time that is time for rain, rainy season. You can't change the time that is time for, for planting or time that is for harvesting. Those are seasons and times God has set for himself. All you need to do in that is when you find yourself operating in that milieu, align yourself with what God is doing. Find out what is God saying and what is God doing. Align yourself with it and wait so that you won't miss the blessing when it comes. Then finally, Paul wrote to the Ephesians and to the Colossians. In the Ephesians, in chapter, I think in chapter, where is it? Chapter 5, in verse 15 and 16, the summary is this. Don't be careless with your life. Don't be careless with what you do. Don't be careless with your time. Rather, redeem your time because we are living in the evil days. These are not the wonder. If Paul will call those days evil days, you can imagine what our day will be. If Paul was to be here today to write about our day, our day would be maybe, maybe I don't know what, what, which word is worse than evil. And if those people were commanded to walk circumspectly, to walk wisely, to shine their eyes, to use their brain, to use their mind, to look before they jump, God is saying much more to us today, be wise. These are not a time for frivolities. This is a set time for the people of God to walk in wisdom. This is a set time for people of God to shine their eyes. This is a set time for people of God to count their words before they speak it. It's not a time you just say anything you like, when you like it, how you like it. This is a time a child of God will intelligently and deliberately speak words in season. There are words that are meant for each season and words are meant for a particular time. Find it out and walk according to that way. We can't afford to be the ordinary, you know, jolly boy we used to be before. These are calls for days of soberness, days of thoughtfulness, days of prayerful consideration of issues and situations before we jump upon them. Days of being calculative. You don't accept things anyhow these days. Difficulty has put people in under pressure and we, we jump on things we should actually reject. Don't allow yourself to be under pressure. Be discerning to know whether you will follow what is going on, whether you will back away. Because God said, these days are evils. It is time for you to redeem the time. You redeem the time by trying as much as possible to invest as much of your time as possible in kingdom promoting enterprise. Invest as much of your time as possible in things that have direct bearing to the assignment God has given to you. If something has no direct bearing 
to the assignment God has given to you, be very careful how you spend time on it. Because the days are evil. It's not every talk that you put your mouth inside. It's not every gathering that you'll be there. It's not every joke that you'll get involved in. It is time to be circumspect in, in every essence of that world. It is time to, to shine your eyes, like I said, and look closely before you act. Why? The days are evil. You must redeem the time. Let me round up by saying, as the psalmist who live in a state of turmoil, a state of pain, a state of confusion, receive this download from heaven that it is time to favor Zion. God will equally release a download to you when it is your time to be favored and nothing can change it in the name of Jesus Christ. For every ministry, there are times and seasons. There is a time to rise and sometimes time to be a little bit silent and time to be at the limelight. That's why when you look through, you see there are certain times ministries will become very prominent, churches will just become, you hear their name everywhere. I mean, things are just going. At another time, it is somebody else that is doing that. That's how God has arranged it. Be patient. Keep your eyes on him. The time to favor you will soon come. And nobody will stop it. Nothing will stop it. It is time for IMF to be favored very soon. Nobody will stop it, and nothing will stop it. We are about to enter into a time of greater glory in IMF. And I know what I'm talking about. We are about to enter into a time of greater glory. Today we have this conference and we are begging people to come. In the next couple of years, people will be paying money to attend our conferences. When they come, say, go and pay, get fee before you enter. It's going to happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow here together and pray together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because it is Hallelujah. What a word. This is not the time to play around. He said, use your time wisely. This is the time you can set time for God. Have you heard that one before? We are talking about God set time, but I'm telling you now, you too, you can set time for God. And you will see things change in your life. Let's appreciate God one more time for that wonderful word. Thank you, sir. We told you it's an international conference. 
So at this juncture, we'll be switching over to UK to get a word and a report card from the international president of IMF himself in the person of Apostle George Akalonu. Shall we put our hands together as we welcome him on Zoom? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God. Floor, sir. Thank, you so, Thank you so much. We thank the Lord for the presence of uh, the chairman of the Global Governing Council, Dr. Cosmos and Dr. Adiola Ilechuku, the member of the Governing Council for Africa, Bishop Stafford, and um, Pastor Tina Mwabu. I also want to thank the Lord for the presence of um, the member of the Council for North America, Apostle Fred Harris, and Pastor Kathleen, uh, they're on Zoom, and also Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Liz on Zoom, the members of Council for Europe. And we're grateful to the Lord that. Um, Apostle Vance and Debbie will be coming in the afternoon session. And so because of the issues of technology, what I'm just going to do, and Pastor Emma, Christova, and Pastor Vicky, uh, that beautiful speech they gave, uh, that he gave, uh, how he has served. And it's significant that it's happening the seventh, they are the seventh national president when IMF is 21 years. And uh, the message just delivered by Dr. Koss and Bishop Stafford, taking together, I believe the Lord has used them to do justice to the team of this conference. Very powerful, very impactful messages. And when you blend them together, you have something to hold on to. And I, by the spirit, I knew that was going to happen. And the Lord wanted me to rather than go on the team, because both of them will be doing the team, the Lord wanted me to share with us the a revelation he gave several times in the last 21 years. And he's still giving it strongly now that the city of Owerri, just like Nazareth and Bethlehem in the Bible, these were cities without reputation cities that were not known in Israel. And the Lord chose them to start something that shook the world. Um, for many years, various vessels, even before I became a believer, various vessels had received signals that the Lord was going to do something awesome in Nigeria as a the, the, the trigger of the African gone. If you look at the map of Niger uh, Africa, Nigeria is like a trigger. And that the Lord will use Nigeria to trigger something. And then 
tracing the prophetic flow, the Lord said it was going to happen east of the Niger and tracing the prophetic flow, he said it was going to be in the city of Oweri, 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 <laughs> Oweri. And brothers and sisters, the Lord from 21 years repeatedly, and this time when I was about to put to pen what the Lord was saying, what I would say, he said, talk to them about my visitation on Oweri 21 years ago, which was to spark something that was to prepare Oweri for a global impact. And he said, I should apologize. And the Lord laid on my heart and I want to apologize, please, for other people who are coming from different cities, bear with me. I'm just being obedient to the heavenly vision that where my own role, he says, is to speak into the reality that his visitation has already begun. And if you know, as I do, the work the Lord has done when he took, for instance, Dr. Cosmos and CRM all the way from the north and brought them to Uwere and from Uwere has expanded to over 600 congregations across the world. If you know what I know about the book the Lord wrote, uh, gave through him, the Church of His Vision, you know what I know about what the Lord has done with uh, Dr. Coles and the Pastor Adiola, Dr. Adiola and Bishop Stafford, you know, in different nations of the world, and not only them, some other ministers, the Lord said to me to share with us that International Ministers Fellowship was designed to be an instrument of bringing to pass the prophetic mandate of Uwere and Nigeria and Africa. And Africa has been in God's program, but neo-colonialism and the colonial spirit clouded our eyes. You see, victors after a war, they write the war account. And so Europeans who uh, you know, colonized Africa, gave Africa a gospel that we now recognize as Christian religion that was designed to keep Africans on tenter hooks, always seeking for more religion. But the Lord said he was going to use the church in Africa to restore the gospel of the kingdom. And that, that seed planted in a worry May 2001, that was the prophetic trajectory. And the Lord spoke to me several times about Africa being the place of refuge and you know, rescuing his program from destruction, the redemptive purpose. And he showed me about how Ab Abraham, we know about the call of Abraham from all the Chaldeans, but what is not emphasized that Abraham, who carried the seed of the woman in his spiritual bowels, Abraham was, uh, was to be wife. He and Sarah were to die of hunger, and the Lord took them to Africa and preserved them. Jacob was preserved in Africa. In Africa, Moses was born, grew up, and became the Lord giver. In Africa, when Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, was born and Herod wanted to kill him, it was to Africa, it was preserved. And when he was about to go to the cross, it was Simon of Cyrene, an African, that helped him to carry the cross where the price was paid for the whole world. And the Lord was saying to me to share with us today what he gave to remind us the significance of what he did. And as Dr. Ilechukwu has said, what is about to start People are going to want to press in. And so may I ask uh, Pastor Kenna to just read out this report because technology may constrain the ability to deliver it. Let him read it out and then I'll come in at the end and say something. Pastor Kenna, would you please help out? Amen. It's on page seven, reading from page seven, you have it with you. International Ministers Fellowship is a network of ministers of the gospel across the globe that share a common passion for holiness, yielding to the Holy Spirit for leadership and empowerment, and a recognition that fellowship with like-minded collaborators is central to gaining divine approval. It is thus an organism 
a living, loving network of like-minded ministers of the gospel who share a passion for intimacy with the Lord and genuine relationship with each other for accountability in an increasingly hostile world. Our unique seven-point vision, the International Minister Fellowship is unique in a number of respects. Firstly, it is inclusive, embracing senior and younger ministers of the gospel, male and female, who have a felt need to encourage one another to make pursuit of holiness a prime pursuit. Secondly, it breaks down standard walls that divide the body of Christ as members cut across denominational barriers, united by faith in Christ Jesus, purity of life, and dependency on the Holy Spirit for empowerment. Thirdly, IMF does not charge any affiliation fees. Members support the network as they are led through love offerings and free will endowments. Fourthly, members are free to belong to other fellowship networks they deem beneficial to achieving of their ministerial mandates. Fifthly, the fellowship shall encourage its members to make their lives and those of the flock of Jesus Christ committed unto their trust the light and salt of their communities to stand up for righteousness and contend earnestly for the faith once delivered across, though it seem foolish to brethren of the Lydosian complex. Matthew 5, 13 to 16, Jude verse 5, 1 Corinthians 1, 18. Sixthly, the fellowship shall proactively engage with other Christian organizations to ensure unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, so that the high priestly intercession of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be a reality without compromising the essentials of the gospel. Ephesians 4, 1 to 7, John 17 to attain Ephesians 5, 26 and 27. Accordingly, the fellowship will encourage all Christian ministries and organizations in the country to prayerfully define essentials or fundamentals of the faith to which all must subscribe in perfect unity. Asserting those issues to which preachers are at liberty to propound their perspectives, insight, and revelations received. Seventh, the fellowship offers its members a clear win-win supra platform where they are able to exchange information on programs and projects and support each other. We are all blessed as we bless each other in love and sincerity. The mission uh, statement. Yeah, sorry, Pastor. We are a living, loving Pastor, network of ministers of the gospel who have yeah. a passion for intimacy with the Lord and genuine relationship with each other for accountability in an increasingly hostile world. To the saints and not to be ashamed of the gospel. We have the structure, the national president, the deputy president, secretary general, treasurer, director of family development, director of business, professional and public affairs network, director, let me just skip that, go down to the structure of the fellowship. It's with you there, you are seeing it. As a spiritual organism, International Ministers Fellowship needs minimal organizational structures. However, because of the realities of civilization, law and order, basic structures are hereby activated for the purposes of ensuring due order in the fellowship. Ensure that purity of the vision is preserved and to ensure adequate documentation which will guide national Uh, sorry, uh, Pastor Kenna, you were reading the Constitution. Hall Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, are you hearing me? Can you hear me, please? Amen. 
Yes, Pastor yes. Kenna, you were reading the Constitution. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, yes. Okay, sir. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sorry right, for no. that mix up. Uh, 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 yeah. Yes, I was. Okay, maybe I'll just take a few places from the report now. It's on page nine. Page nine. Text of the report of the vision holder and international president, Apostle George and Pastor Grace Akalonu, to delegates and brethren at the 21st anniversary of International Ministers Fellowship holding a CRM, Holy Ghost Tabernacle in Owere, Imo State, May 12, 14. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Psalm 102, verse 13. One sign of maturity in the Bible is the ability to recognize the set time for divine visitation. It was for this reason that the sons of Issachar received commendation. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. First Chronicles 12.32 In a special way, this event is about remembrance of and celebration of the church in the city of Owe, in the state of Nigeria. To that extent, please do not be offended when we focus on this city, which is the Jerusalem of the International Ministers' Fellowship. Just as anointing flows from the head and runs down to the skates, the grace and prophetic mantle on a way we work for all who embrace and celebrate what the Lord has done to this city. Beyond the city, this is also a report concerning the purpose of God for Nigeria and indeed the entire African continent and its diaspora in America and Europe. From 1970, God used various vessels to speak about special revival that will have Owere as its epicenter. In different ways, he used various vessels as instruments of revival. When it was a set time for the church in Owere to become a catalyst of transformation of the gospel on a national, continental, and global level, the packaging did not quite look like it. After 21 years of working in one of the prophetic tracks, namely International Ministers Fellowship, we present this report so that the brethren can evaluate and respond as the Holy Spirit leads. First things first, a prepared soil for a good seed. In May 2001, Apostle Vance Russell led a delegation including Prophet Chinedum Benjamin, Anyocha, E.L. Stanley, and Terry Jones to speak at the first Global Apostolic and Prophetic Summit. The meeting, which held at Lifeline Assembly on the junction of Olu Road and Asomta Avenue, was the culmination of planning which started on December 30, 2000, when Apostle George and Pastor Grace Akalano were commissioned to coordinate the project. The first part of the report refused reviews a humbling truth. The delegation from Austin, Texas was stepping into a very city on which the Lord had placed a strong prophetic mantle concerning the manifest destiny of the African continent for the end times. Over the course of 25 years, God had raised a pool of ministers who were literally on standby awaiting the set time and season for manifestation. City elders, city fathers, elders and foot soldiers over time, the prophetic dam burst loose on the city with the rise of many vessels that were to play a part in major visitations of the Lord. This includes city fathers such as Bishop Chima Madre of Holiness, Evangelistic Church, and late Archbishop Alexander Ezug of Overcomers Christian Mission, national figures such as Bishop Paul Nwachuku, late Pastor O. Ezekiel, and late Archbishop Benson in the house, and made outreaches to Were and planted churches. There is reason to believe that late Pa Elton, a great missionary and revivalist from Europe, imparted some of the vessels laboring in Owere. When the city, God, within the city, God raised elders at the gates, whose interests went beyond their local congregation and denomination. Between 1990 and 1996, these and other vessels, we do not have their names, arose by divine plan. 
Bishop Innocent Terimuj of Holiness Church, and later Healing the Nations, Dr. Cosmas and Adjoli Lechuku of Charismatic Renewal Ministries, Reverend Dr. Vic T. Siodo of Bam of Gilead Ministries, Archbishop Steve Bazio of Arm of the Lord Ministries, Bishop Stafford Nwog of Praise Center Church, Bishop Masue Korye of Lifeline Assembly, Bishop Ngozi Drek of Erange Chapel, Apostle Dr. Ben Mbata of Total Care Ministry, Bishop Paul Laika of Rufeka Holy Ghost Chapel, Bishop Iman Nan of Saved by Grace Mission, Bishop Kenneth Ebo of Holiness Evangelistic Church, Apostle Ologoji of the Land Army Stroke Olibo Race Liberation Prayer Movement, Late Bro Uche Emezue and Bariso Zoma of Full Gospel Business Men Fellowship International, and Dr. Dan Onwukwe of Scripture Union. With time, leaders of denominational churches in the Evangelical and Pentecostal community learned the weight of their offices to what the Lord was doing in terms of unity. These include Reverend M. Oba, moderator of Assemblies of God, Central Igbo District, along with Reverend Michel Senior, Reverend Luke Ebonoba of Four Square Gospel Church, Reverend Gordy of Christian Pentecostal Mission, Bishop Ezene Ebo of UCC. The arrival of Dr. Cyril Okrocha as bishop added impetus to the work of such passionate revivalists in the Anglican Communion as Engineer Obiomo Okere of St. Andrews, Aladema, and Prefab, Bishop Samuel Uche and Bishop Monde Kemakula of the two Methodist denominations were open to what the Holy Spirit was doing as well as leaders of the Presbyterian Church and General Secretary of the Baptist Convention Dr. Dominic Machuku. In the arena of ministerial training, special credits must be given to Dr. Gary Maxi of Wesley International Bible Church and Dr. Inye Goro of West Africa Advanced School of Theology, Dr. Mecca Wampa of Intercessors of Nigeria and Africa, also inspiring the church to tarry in prayers for revival. Within over Dr. Luoji's All Igbo Race Prayer Summit began to gain traction. The Nigerian Fellowship of Evangelical Students, NIFES, the Nigerian Christian Corpus Fellowship, NCCF, also made significant contributions to the gospel in Owere. Some soldiers of the cross who have been translated to glory played strategic roles during those years, including late prophetess Deborah Agugua Spring of Life Ministry, late Pastor Mike Jacobs, late Pastor Jonathan Otoye, late Bishop Peter Chukuma. Let Professor John of Late Professor John of Febu of Unity for Africa, assisted by his brother, Evangelist Peter of Febu, who came from USA and UK, respectively. We are part of vessels the Lord used to affect the city. With time, the Lord raised such younger vessels as Bishop Charles Uchenna, Pastor Uka Chodo, Pastor Iman Christopher, Pastor Larry Michel, Pastor Austin Nadi, Reverend Dr. Jami Ikeke, Pastor Austin Abbaso, Pastors Dennis and Henrietta Jacobs, Reverend Beth. Pastors Dennis and Henrietta Jacobs, Reverend Bethel, Wanebo, Bishop Chris Elimiaga, Pastor Alozio Ikone, Pastor Chibuzo, and late Pastor Terex Okere, amongst others. In 1996, two things occurred within six weeks in Tava. God led then Pastor George Akron of Deeper Life Bible Church to resign in peace and be available for service to the body. Elders of the body received him with open arms of the at the auditorium of the Chamber of Commerce, Noki Road. Within a few weeks, an existential threat to the gospel arose 
during the Tokoto saga. Bishop Innocent Rimujo, then president of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Mo State Chapter, rallies the church together, waiting, working closely with Pastor George Akalon, Barisangozi Olehi, Pastor Cosma Silechuku, Bishop Stafford, Bishop Maswe Korea, Bishop Victor Isio, Bishop Mosi Drake, Bishop Paul Aka, and a few others who hazarded their lives for sake of the gospel. The Lord granted the living church a resounding victory. That crisis opened doors of opportunity for the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria to gain respect of the government and people of Imo State. Pastor Gochuku Nachuku, then special advisor to the military governor of Imo State, became a useful instrument in the hand of the Lord. Between 1996 and 2001, Apostle George, Pastor Grace, and their chief of staff, Pastor Emma Christopher, worked closely with Dr. Koss and Dr. Jolly Lechuku, Bishop Stafford Wogu, Bishop Maswe Korea, Bishop Victor Isio, Bishop Ungozi Direke, Bishop Paul Laka, and Dr. Luoji to activate a wider manifestation of the city church. They required outreaches. This required outreaches to Anglican Communion and his bishop, Dr. Sirio Lokorocha, Verero Biomo Okere of St. Andrews, Aladema, Dr. Dom Wachuku of the Baptist Mission, Bishop Samuel Luce of Methodist Church, Bishop Monday Kamakolam, of the Aladema Methodist Church, Reverend Nna, and late Reverend Oba of the Presbyterian, Presbyterian Church. One outcome was the Jesus Week project, where churches in over 30 locations across Owere had many crusades in their neighborhoods, leading to the Grand Jesus Rally at the Danayam Stadium. The cooperation extended to the Renhard Bonke, Renhard Bonke Crusade one of the best in the nation, and other projects which fostered unity of the body in the bond of peace. I will take a few more things. The key prophetic word, the redemptive purpose of Africa. From 1996, the Lord released messages through various vessels who interpreted same according to the individual perspectives. It was a message that before the return of the Lord Jesus, God will visit Africa and use it as a springboard to prepare the way. Nigeria will play a key role in the process with the church in Owera and Imo State as epicenter. The Lord used these prophetic samples to confirm what he was saying. When Abraham, who carried the seed of the woman in his loins, was in danger of famine in Genesis 12, take note of this. It was in Africa that God preserved him. When Jacob, the patriarch of Israel, faced similar challenge, God preserved him and his family in Africa. Moses, the lawgiver of the Old Testament, when born and bred in Africa and saw God's presence in the burning bush in Africa. When Herod planned to kill the infant Jesus, God asked Joseph to take him to Africa for preservation. When Jesus went on his way to Golgotha, it was an African, Simon of Syrian, in modern-day Libya, who God used to help him carry the cross, on which the sacrifice for sins of all the world was effected. The summary of this, the redemptive purpose of Africa is to preserve the divine purpose from corruption and destruction. In the first century, the gospel had been turned in Europe, into Christian religion and exported worldwide. The Lord proposed to use the church in Africa to discover core components of the gospel of the kingdom and take it to the uttermost parts of the world, as detailed in Matthew 24, 14, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and Acts 1, verse 8. By grace, this vision has been recorded in the groundbreaking book, Dispensations, Seasons and Times, which traces the root of Africa's spiritual problems, the divine plan of redemption, and the redemptive purpose to manifest destiny of the continent as a place of refuge for God's early program. Videos of these revelations are available on YouTube, free of charge, in True Kingdom Life channel. Another book, Completing the Unfinished Reformation, provides the historic context of the redemptive mandate of the church in Nigeria.
Please, you can download this. Let me now just talk about, read the way forward. You can read the rest of it. The way forward is on page 14. Page 14. Best number one, personal repentance from especially the sins of animosity, hatred, evil speaking, systemic disunity, and lack of love. Ministers need to release themselves from bondage of ought against others and the religious spirits which encourages self-righteousness and Phariseeism. Two, solemn assembly for corporate cleansing and renewal and breaking the siege of crime, bloodletting, and idolatry, which have collectively created a strong covering cast over the city. This paralyzes governance, socioeconomic development, and the gospel. Three, let more ministers and ministries embrace the mandate for end-time reformation and the African dispensation. It is time to dump religious rituals and ABC churchinity, that is in brackets, attendance, buildings, and cash. That is ABC. The key is to understand and promote kingdom culture rather than religion. The curriculum of the Global School of Ministry is a free resource for transforming congregation from mortuaries to hatcheries for destinies. Four, true love, strengthen the bond of in interpersonal relationship amongst ministers and tap into the self-evident grace upon various vessels planted in the city for the good of all. Five, restore and consolidate the Jesus Week project into a permanent process for love, unity centered on the head of the one single kingdom church. Six, map over for spiritual warfare. Activate active sectors around gates of the city, natural altars, and definite communities which make up the greater Owere metropolis with definite operational leaders. In this arrangement, churches and ministries within definite sectors should meet at agreed intervals for prayer and spiritual warfare to exercise keys of the kingdom within their areas. This is suggestive plan on each road, Bam of Gilead, Doctisiodu, Potakot Road, Sognu Owere, Press Center, Bishop Stafford, Ebu Road, CROM, Dr. Cosmas Lechuku, Okiwe Road, he reigns, Bishop Dureke, was works layout, dress to work, Pastor Mark Christopher, Aladema, Spring of Life, Pastor Iken Nagugwa, Ikenebu, Pastor Ajero, Owere Nchise, Apostle Olu Oji, Olibo Race, and Global School of Ministry, MCC Stroke, Urata Road, Rofeka Church, Bishop Paul Aka, Abba Road, Pastor Jalat, Onwebu, Neke the Old Road, Pastor Cosmos Okonko, Oji, Bishop Titus Akanabu through Pastor John Alexander. Ebu, Dr. Jami Keke, Amakohia, Bishop Timothy Aaron, Akwakuma, Pastor Austin Nadi, Ebada, Bishop Maswe Korea, Mbiri, Healing the Nations through Bishop Erimujo, Prefab, Bishop Mrs. Ezugo, Vakoma Christian Mission. Other sectors can be identified and activated so that Owere becomes a prayed up city. Seven, let elders at the gates of the city meet to pray, share prophetic currents, insights, sensing, and work strategically. The elders can rotate hosting of the meetings. The Lord will be pleased for the church in Owere to break the curse of extreme republicanism called Ibuemweze. We believe that in Dr. Cosmas, Ilechuku and Bishop Victor Isio.
to accomplish this. One is 24 churches and ministries should each accept spiritual responsibility over one hour each day to pray for the city and war over current challenges. B, 30 so 31 churches and ministries should be networked for prayer and fasting. Each one should take responsibility to pray and war over each of the days of each month. Within the church and ministry, they can organize how to cover all the 24 hours. C, 24 dedicated intercessors can be mobilized from across the city. Each of them can take permanent responsibility for a specific hour of the day throughout the year. Nine, a commitment to reject the church of Satan. Church of Women and hybrid church models to embrace the kingdom church model. Please study the kingdom church on the website for details. Ten, embrace the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, prophets, and teachers who will activate the priesthood of all believers or make Ijedek priesthood. This is a vital key for women to work in this redemptive purpose. 11. Strengthen Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. PFN has a special role that needs to be recognized, embraced, celebrated, and supported. Let us do whatever it takes to strengthen it. Let us also keep it out of partisan politics. 12. Continued dialogue between Pentecostal, charismatic evangelicals, and independents and the Anglican communion. This connection is for good and should be strengthened by those who have grace to spearhead the effort. 13, and lastly, and uh, Apostle George will come back to summarize. Time for all to embrace International Ministers Fellowship. After 21 years, it is obvious that God truly chose IMF as a vehicle to fulfill part of the prophetic mandate of the church in Owere City, in most state, Nigeria. There is nothing the fellowship can prove. IMF will never displace the work of bodies such as PFN or CAN. We appeal to all elders and ministers of the gospel in Nigeria to embrace this prophetic mandate. You can register at www.imfministers.com or contact Pastor Ma Christopher, the national president, if you are here. Thank you for your time. I would like to welcome back our international president to summarize. Thank you so much, Pastor Ikenna. For let's clap for Pastor Ikenna for delivering that word. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I won't take um, more time since it's already written in the conference uh, booklet. I want to encourage every one of you, please, during the break time, make out time to read all that is there. But the core things have been done. And I want to thank the Lord, especially for Dr. Koss and Dr. Adiola as chair, uh, Bishop Stafford and uh, Pastor Tina, Wobu as Africa, the representing Africa in the governing council, um, um, Apostle Fred Harris and Pastor Kathleen Harris representing North America, Pastor Jeremiah and uh, Pastor Lee's representing Europe, and of course, Apostle Vance and Apostle Debbie for the way the Lord has enabled us to work together to pursue his mandate. IMF has modeled. There are many things about IMF that are not stated, but the ones that are stated in IMF, we do not do politics. 21 years, we've not done politics. We don't do elections. We move as are led by Holy Spirit and even the organs, the things we do in the organs of the fellowship, they are very wonderful. The Global Executive Committee has been very wonderful. These are brethren who have sacrificed so much, you know, so much. The list of them is in the booklet. Please continue to pray that we will continue to work together by the grace of the Lord. This is a collective trust. My wife and I, in serving the body in Owere and serving also internationally, we are aware that IMF is a collective trust and we have kept it so. 
even all the other visions the Lord gave to us, you know, originally Global School of Ministry, the master class, you know, the various arms of the master class, and what we do on Facebook, everything we do, even our local assembly, everything is designed to create value for IMF, create membership for IMF. And that is what the Lord led us to do anywhere, anytime. If you check on this list now, over half of those online, a quarter actually or more, are either in the main master class, the Asia Middle East Pacific master class, the now generation master class, or global school of ministry, or are officers in the mission central. That is how the Lord taught us that we can build value for the fellowship through what we do. And we encourage everyone who is part of the fellowship, please don't come alone. Find a way to get people in your sphere of influence to be involved. And we bless the Lord for you all. We don't want to take too much time studying what is written already. And we, and we thank the Lord for the opportunity to serve the way the Lord has ordained it. And we honor our elders. And we are grateful for the way the organizing committee has put these things together. The Lord bless the organizing committee. I want to thank the Lord for the brethren from UK, IMF UK, IMF USA, IMF Ireland, IMF Italy, and IMF South Africa, who also chipped in to support the work of the organizing committee. Please, those five chapters will bless the Lord for you. And before we close, I will ask Dr. Cos and Bishop Stafford to please remember to pray for them. Amen. Let the program continue so that we will be able to cover all the things we ought to cover. And I hope we will not see Nigerian time again. When we meet again, we spent about an hour, you know, preparing, but then we thank the Lord for Apostle Fred Harris, who was on a major prophetic flow, and he kept the online going and all the intercessors who prayed. We bless the Lord. Thank you so much. A round of applause for international president. We were scheduled to have a break 12 to 1, but uh, today is the starting day. It won't be like this in the evening and tomorrow. So before we close, we are going to bring up our prayer director to lead us in prayer for about 5, 10 minutes, and then we'll go on break, and we'll come back 12, 12, 20. We'll start 12, 30 this afternoon session. We just eat 30 minutes. No, sorry, one thirty. sorry. one thirty. we'll come and start that evening. We'll make up for the lost time. Let's welcome our prayer director, national prayer director, Pastor Godfrey Okachi to lead us for about five, ten minutes before we close this morning session. Put your hands together as it comes. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Let's open our mouth and begin to thank the Lord for the program he has for the world. Through Africa, Nigeria, or where as a springboard. Let's open our mouths and begin to thank God for this program that has started. Open your mouth and begin to worship God. You can stand up and say, Lord, thank you for your program. Thank you for your program. Thank you because by being here today, you are part of the program. Open your mouth and say, help me to cut the vision. Help me to cut the vision. Thank God for the program, a program that he, God intends to, 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 to bless this world before the coming of our Lord Jesus. Let's say, God, thank you for, 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 for engineering this program. Thank you for men and women you have used a lot of names we have mentioned. Thank you for those who have still carrying the burden. Thank God for you being here today to get this vision and become part of it. So thank you, Father. Let's thank God for the apostle, George Akalono, the wife. Let's thank God for keeping the vision alive. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for the strategies that have been mapped out that can help to achieve this program. Let's pray that 
This strategy is released here will not be in vain. This strategy released here shall be downloaded by all that have read this thing and God helping all the leaders in Oweri will come to see and catch this vision that will engineer fire in Oweri. They say, oh God help. At this vision you have engineered. Let it catch fire. Let more leaders, you know, where they catch the vision. Let the strategies be mapped out, be taken seriously. Oh, God, who have begun this thing, breathe upon it, oh God, that it will bring forth fruit, that these labels, these labels will bring forth fruit. They pray to God they are going to play their own role. Pray to God that the church, in a way, will remain united. The church, in a way, will remain united. Pray to God that all that have been contending to frustrate the church in a way they be united. Let them be overthrown this day. Let them be crushed this day. All who are contending, all the spirit of laziness, like attitude, let God overthrow it. All who are contending to make division to die, let them be overthrown by the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and contend. Contend against the powers, forces. Because for every kingdom of God project, there are challenges there. There are forces saying no. But the Bible said the gate of God, the, 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 the church of God is marching on. And the gate of hell cannot prevail. Open your mouth and say, Father, all the gates of hell contain against this vision. Let them be overthrown by the blood of Jesus. All the altars raised. Let them be consumed by fire. Open your mouth and pray and say, God, walk, give, 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 give victory. Give victory. Help the people, help the church to prevail. Open your mouth and contain that this vision will mature. That what God intends will no longer be delayed. The, the program is set time. Let's pray that, oh God, let this be a set time indeed. Oh God, let help come from heaven. A set time, help come from heaven. A set time, heaven is at work. Let's say, for that release angels, for that pour down your spirit, that this set time we kick start what you intend. And there will be no more delay again. Open your mouth and pray. God will bless this program. That the many things ahead of us, God will continue to make his mind known. God will continue to make his mind known. God will continue to sharpen ministers. God will continue to, 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 to bless us. That this program, God intends to do things in a way. God intends to take things in your life. Pray that all that God has intended will be realized in the program. Oh Lord, pour out your spirit. Oh Lord, send your word that what you have intended in this program will be realized. Open your mother, start thanking God. Say the remaining program is in your hand. We are continuing the afternoon. Lord, be with us. As many as should be here who have not come, Lord, taught them to come. A duty yourself to make sure that you, you, you make calls and tell people things are happening here. Make sure that tomorrow you come with some. But let's pray that tomorrow we will have overflowing, overflowing place. In this afternoon, many will attend. God will bless ministries. God will bless you. God will bless over it. God will bless our leaders. God will bless all. In Jesus' name we pray. Start thanking God for answering our prayer. Open your mouth. Start thanking God for the big prayer we have made. Heaven have had us. Heaven have had us. In Jesus' name we pray. So Lord, we thank you for this hour, this vision. This thing you have started, it will blossom. We are saying this is set time. Lord, say your word. Pour down your spirit that of a truth about this program. The world will never be remain the same. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, I pray. Please let's appreciate uh, Reverend Audrey. All right, just like you heard from the administrator and the planning committee chairman. We are on break till 1.30. Please, whatever you need to stretch your body, move around. I'm sure that uh, the Ketra people will attend to us briefly. Thank you. God bless you.